what's up everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here I'm Paris and I make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business Lady Simone Candle Co although my candle making journey started back in 2018 I have been in business running and operating Lady Simone Candle Co since 2020 so I'm approaching my third year in business therefore I have made so many mistakes some I still <laughs> kick myself in the tail for and others that I've that have involved growing pains but all of which I can tell you I've learned from making me more mature and a groomed business owner so and all you all know with my channel it's, it's all about inspiring you all to walk um, inspiring you all and walking you through the how to's of, of the candle biz journey right so in today's video I wanted to discuss with you what I would do if I were to launch Lady Simone Candle Co this year looking back having the knowledge and coaching um, I definitely would have experienced some of the hardships I experienced so here's a little guidance for you and hopefully it will encourage you to make some modifications to your plans to avoid a lot of the mistakes I made. So let's just get started. The first thing I wish I would have done more research when searching for like the, I like to call it my business suite or a business suite. And when I say business suite, I mean like your domain, your logo, filing for your LLC should you decide to. Um, like, all of that good stuff like a business email um, my business mailbox like I wish I would have been able to know where to look when I first started it would have saved me so much so much more money as money was already tight obviously when you are getting started you don't know what you don't know right so I use different platforms and sites in order to file my LLC get my logo get my domain order my business cards like Yes, I watch YouTube and search Google just like y'all, right? But I wish I would have heard about Taylor Brands. So in my previous video I've done um, partnering with Taylor Brands, I showed you all pretty much how Taylor Brands using this all-in-one platform can help you save money because you're able to kind of create and purchase your business suite all in one platform so shout out to Taylor Brands for sponsoring this portion of the video from logo to full business launch your candle biz with ease as Taylor Brands is that one-stop shop to make your logo apply for an LLC if you choose to design your branding package a website a domain business cards social media tools and more all that good stuff you can pretty much start your small business now with Taylor Brands with plans as low as $8.99 a month and focus on what matters most creating amazing candles yes so I wanted to walk you through the process of pretty much creating your your startup business suite so I am going to walk you through creating a logo show you how you could purchase a domain show you the website builder how you can create business cards all that good stuff So let's go ahead and start with finding, well, creating a logo. So I'm just going to make up a business name. I'm going to just put Lady C Candles and hit design. If you have a tagline, definitely add it here. They will incorporate it into your logo. But I like logos that are just the logo. So we're going to hit design. And then it'll probably ask you, how did you discover Taylor Brands? So you could probably click YouTube since I'm talking about it and you're watching me. But any of these, if it applies to you, you would just click. But I'm going to just skip for now. So like I showed in my previous video, here you're going to answer a couple questions to just kind of help them form the type of design that you want to do. So for us, it would be physical goods. And then this is the previous logo that I kind of made up in my last video. Um, but I am starting fresh, so we're going to keep going. And put candles for the industry. And tell us a little bit about what you do. So I make and sell candles to empower women and 
advocate for mental health and hit next icon based or name based so I'm more of a name based type of person um, choose what fits you so we're gonna go with name based and you remember this is where we like to pick the styles so I like classy elegant and then we'll pick one more we'll probably do hmm, trendy Let's just go for it <laughs> now it's designing your logo creating your business cards and planning your social posts <laughs> and Ta-da! There you go. Um, so here, over here, is where you can look um, and see what type of logo fits you, your, what you're looking for. And so I'm just going to scroll down and just kind of see what sticks out to me. That's pretty cool. I like this. I like this. This is very similar to the logo I created before. This is nice. I like that. I love anything that can appeal to both men and women since I sell to both men and women. So I'm actually going to just stick with this. And if you want to customize it more, you absolutely can. Or you can just leave it as is and just click love it. When you customize, you can kind of play around with the fonts and the colors. Um, you can check out my previous video for more in-depth. But I'm just going to click love it and then hit I'm finished. So now we are in the back end of your business suite, pretty much. And here is where you can begin to tackle all the other areas of brand building. So next is where you would want to either check or purchase your domain. So up here is where they already pretty much have your domain. If you do not know what a domain is, that is your .com. That is what makes you... Um, present on the World Wide Web, right? So it's your .com. It's LadyCCandles.com, LadySimoneCandleCo.com, whatever your business name is, .com. So it's very, very important when you first start your business to make sure that you, it will, that your domain name is available. There's a lot of businesses out here. There's a lot of candle businesses out here. So you want to hurry and check to make sure, hey, is my name available um, to use for the World Wide Web? Is it available on all social media platforms and all that good stuff? So what we're going to do is click this arrow here to check the domain. So you would just type in your business name, Lady C Candles, and hit enter. And what will pop up is a series of um, dot coms or this, uh, any of the endings that are available. So here's my business name, LadyCCandles.com. It's basically saying what you wanted is available. So, um, but they also give you other variations. And they do this because just in case um, maybe something else sticks out to you. So. You have, they give you several different options. And so once your domain is available, you checked it, you can click select. And this is where you can go through to purchase your domain. Now, domains are relatively cheap. And I say that because literally you they're good for however many years. So I usually do with some of my domains that I have because I have other Besides Lady Simone Candle Co., I have other um, domains that I have purchased. Um, you can either do one year up to even five years. And the longer, um, the more years that you go, the more you can save. Cause, and it's just pretty much when you would renew it. So that's why I say buying your domain is cheap. That's something that you can easily check off your list. Just go ahead and grab it. Um, have it renewed for one to however many years you choose and bada boom pay for it. You are set 
Here is um, where you can also get your business mailbox, aka like your um, business email and have everything synced with whatever platform that you use for your email um, provider. Um, so after you purchase your domain, this is where you can come and have your business email and get that. I use G Suite, Google Workspace. I love it. Um, after I purchased my domain, I went on and got my business email too. Um, and then once you purchase your business email, you can also set up within Gmail, if that's your email provider, um, set up different aliases, meaning you can do hi at ladycandles.com. You can also use support at ladycandles.com, info at ladycandles.com. Those are called aliases. And what that helps is it keeps your mailbox organized and whatever inquiries come in, you know, um, based on why you created that alias, what type of inquiry has come in. So like hi at Lady Simone Candle Co. Dot com is what I use for any general business inquiries. Support at Lady Simone Candle Co. Dot com is all over my um, Shopify website. That is for customer service. And then I use um, info at Lady Simone Candle Co. Dot com. And I use that for Lady C's Digital Studio for candle making assistance, general candle making questions, and I use that email to run the studio side of my business. You can also create digital business cards, um, which are really, really popular. Um, basically, they're just, if somebody say, hey, do you have your card on you? Basically, they can either scan um, a QR code and pretty much your entire businesses profile and contact information like you kind of see here in the picture will pop up and you can create your own now I do think it's helpful um, I know a lot of people still use actual physical cards and what you can do is you can still use a physical card that has your QR code on it or you could still create regular business cards to include in your orders um, which I think including those in your orders is helpful it helps people remember who you are or say hey girl where you get them candles oh girl I got her business card in my drawer let me show you you know but when you're out and about let's say you're marketing you're at vendor shows and things like that and somebody wants a business card but maybe they don't want to carry a whole bunch of stuff around or they already have a bunch of shopping bags um, from shopping at the vendor um, show then you can definitely say, hey, I can just give you my digital business card. So you can go here to pretty much create your own digital business card and you can choose whatever design you want, color background, um, import your logo and pretty much go from there. Follow the prompts and publish it. And it comes in handy. It's, it's really, really popular now. Everybody's going digital. Of course, they give you the opportunity to register for an LLC should you decide to. I get a lot of questions about, um, should I do an LLC, blah, 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 blah. When you make your first sale, if you have not legally filed to be a legal entity, the IRS automatically recognize you, recognizes you as a sole proprietor. Um, but you form... When you want to form an LLC, that involves actual paperwork filing um, and all of that stuff. Basically, the difference between being a sole proprietor and an LLC, it pretty much helps separate you as a business entity. It keeps your personal finances and affairs completely separate from your business affairs. God forbid somebody tries to go after your business funds, sue you, or if you have an altercation, um, basically anything that has to do with courts um, and your taxes, everything is kept separate. There are potential tax um, benefits that come with filing um, and, and, and LLC. You can definitely read more here. I have a whole business series, three-part business series on my channel as well. I will link the um, playlist in the cards, um, but definitely check that out where I talk more in depth about what an LLC is and how um, it can be beneficial, um, but it's definitely not required to actually run a business. 
The next that I wanted to show you is you can actually create your own website using this platform too, which is bananas. And I'm just like, wow, like literally you can complete everything with this entire platform and it's amazing. So you can also create your own website. You can either use their automatic website builder or you can select one of their DIY templates and build your own custom online store. So depending on how hands-on or creative you are, um, they give you two options to cater to um, both skill sets. So you can also use this to create your website, which is amazing. And then you'll connect your domain to your website. And this is what makes you live on the World Wide Web. So if somebody put in www.ladyseatcandles.com, once you connect your domain to your website, your website will then appear on the internet. And then you can also list your business on Google. Um, so, you know, you can show up and manage your business on Google. So, you know, when we look for a certain store, like, girl, what time? What time does uh, Macy's close tonight? And you know, that's you pull up Macy's and it gives you their business hours, blah, blah, blah. That is, if somebody were to look you up, you would pop up in this format. So um, that's really, really dope. The last thing I wanted to show you is your branded assets down here that they allow you to have. So you can do like apparel which is also really dope and I say that because let's say you're doing festivals and vendor shows this year what you can do is get you a shirt and I know every time I do a vendor show like literally everybody in my camp wears a shirt I wear a shirt my little sister has a shirt my husband has a shirt um, I'm gonna end up making my, my kids some shirts too and it's funny because on their shirts it says sister of Lady Simone Candle Co. My husband says husband of Lady Simone Candle Co. So you can get, this is really cool if you have people that are coming to help you at your vendor shows. Um, everybody can wear a shirt. Um, so, you know, everybody know who, who you are. You can also design physical business cards. Like I said, I still think this is very relevant. Um, I think it's great for including in orders. And some people still like physical, um, the physical and tangible things, um, especially when you're dealing with the older crowd. Um, you know, I have a lot of older aged customers and so they still like that tangible item. So you can also create um, merchandise and swag. So stickers, notebooks, stamps, greeting cards. You can do mugs, stuff like like mer miscellaneous products, so like tags and things like that. So any way you're trying to up in um, your brand, especially when you're in person, like branded assets are always a great, great way to go. So if you're thinking of starting a candle business this year, but don't know where to start, y'all check out Taylor Brands. Like I'm kicking myself in the tail for this one because I, it would have saved me so much time and such of a headache, but that's, that's neither here or there. That's why I'm here to pass on the, the deets to y'all. Um, Taylor Brands offers everything you need to launch your business in one place. Check them out with the link in my description box and use code um lady lady simone yt for 40 percent off of taylor brands yes another thing i wish i would have known is that you do not have to keep so many candles in stock of each scent and let me explain what i mean i mean learning to be okay with not having 15 and 20 candles of each scent in stock it's not necessary <laughs> when you first start your business um, as your business grows and you begin to examine and analyze your purchase trends um, from your customers what's popular what's selling what's not selling what should i discontinue um, i see this is a popular scent um, i want to release a new scent let me do some test grounds here when you begin to scale and grow you know you'll be able to learn um, how many candles to keep on your shelf, right? Based on your growth. But when you first start your business, I know I felt like I had to have like 10, 12 cents of each cent in stock and ready to go. And it's just not the case. Like 
it's okay if you have four to six. I typically do six to eight be just because, again, that's kind of custom to my customer base and how often I'm turning over inventory, which you'll learn over time. And so that's one thing I wish I would have learned, not basically just not overwhelming myself and feeling like I had to have 20 candles of each scent in stock at all times. It's not necessary when you first start out. Something else I wish I would have known and what I would do differently if I was to start the candle business this year is to have backup suppliers. Y'all, I think the pandemic, if you started your business pre-pandemic or around pandemic, then you know what I'm talking about. Supplies were so scarce. Like Wicks, I know, were just non-existent <laughs> for a while. Um, it was really, really hard to keep things in stock to even make the candles. So my advice to you is have backup suppliers. Have at least two to four um, backups. Um, I know I have three backups that I use. Just in case your main supplier is out, look at other backup suppliers for your raw supplies. So your wicks, see if another supplier offers the same size, the same type of jars. See if another supplier offers the same type of wax in wicks you use and lids um, and things like that. I do labels here at home. So that was not an issue, but just all the materials I needed, you know, check Amazon. Like I know Amazon, um, I purchased like 600 wick stickers and just things that I knew I can keep in stock. Candle labels, warning labels, um, I got off Amazon. I got like 600 wax melt warning labels. I got like 600 off Amazon um, and I still have them <laughs> and still using through them. So have backup suppliers. If I could tell you anything else, that is probably, that should have been, that probably should have been number one. <laughs> else I would do differently if I was to start this year was making sure I properly priced my products. Since starting my business, I've actually been through two price increases and I know that that's actually a lot um, and I don't recommend it. Um, I think one price increase is good. Luckily, my customers understood. It was just a matter of informing them, but I also let them know, hey, I'm switching wax or, you know, things, prices have gone up on certain supplies. I want to make the best quality candle for you and phrasing it that way, not like I'm lying, um, but giving your customer satisfaction and, and, and validation in what they're purchasing from you, I think helps um, ease the wounds when you have to um, raise prices. I started out um, at $12. I went to 15 and now I'm at $16 um, for my candles. I'm actually um, doing a price increase with my wax melts here soon as well, just because I'm elevating the packaging and um, things like this. You know, it's just things that I'm doing and prices have gone up on everything. I'm just being completely honest. And so um, you have to make sure you're making money. You have to make a profit on your business or you're never gonna be able to grow and scale. So I would say make sure you are properly pricing your products. Um, another reason pricing is a big thing, depending on the selling platform that you use. I know Etsy, for example, um, has a lot of fees. Um, you get hit with a lot of fees. Um, so I would recommend make sure you're pricing your products that um, where you can include and incorporate those fees so that way your business isn't eating so much of it. Um, you can hide that in, into the price of your products, your candles, your wax melts, whatever, um, to make sure that you are still not only making a profit, but that your business can handle the overhead, which fees typically falls under the overhead and operating expenses. Um, another thing is shipping and packaging. That kind of falls under the pricing umbrella for this topic. And and um, so do research on packaging, um, whatever carrier that you are using to ship with, you know, look at their different packaging um, to make sure um, you can either get free supplies or if you're buying boxes, um, just make sure you're weighing your products, getting that final weight to make sure you are, your customers are getting the best shipping rate and you're not getting hit so hard with um, shipping cost as well. The last thing I wish I would have known um, in order for me to do things different if I was launching this year would be learning 
in informing myself on taxes. And there's several things that I wanna talk about that kind of falls under this taxes umbrella. One being inventory. I would have definitely done more research to understand how much inventory plays into taxes at the end of the year um, and how important it is to manage and track. I have told this story several times where I, um, my first year in business, I had to basically back track all of my inventory for that for that since launching that may and it took a long time to do and um it was painful to have to go back and try to recapture that inventory what i sold and what i purchased and entering in all of those supplies it was a pain in the area and i would not wish that on nobody so make sure you are managing and tracking your inventory it is very very important for taxes sales taxes that is very very important i've told this story as well where i owed ohio six months not six months may may i think it was like may june Ju may june july august oh so it was six months six months of back sales taxes that i did not pay to ohio again you don't know what you don't know or that you don't know enough of and so ensure that you are capturing um, those you are collecting taxes for your state and you research what is required from your state how often should you pay what um, platform or database you should pay your sales taxes on i know for ohio i am required to pay mine on a monthly basis so look into that Estimated taxes falls under this umbrella as well. So you do not start paying estimated taxes to the IRS until you start making a profit. So you pay taxes on your profit. So um, I am now at the point as of last year, I think the second quarter of 2021 is when I actually had to start paying um, estimated taxes because now my business is profitable. Um, so look into that know your books so if you need to get quickbooks get quickbooks keep up with your bookkeeping track your expenses and your income um learn what a p l is learn um how to read your reports your financial reports understand the financial health and status of your business so that way you are not getting into any unnecessary financial trouble with the irs or with your state or even with your jurisdiction um, and things like that so I hope you have enjoyed this video. I thought this would be great because I get so many questions about starting a candle business this year. And as I've been reflecting on my last few years of business, since actually just even starting the craft, there's so much that I've learned, so many mistakes that I've made, things I wish I would have done differently. And so I wanted to drop these gems on your lap today. If you're thinking about starting a candle business, definitely um, consider what I've told you. Um, I talk a lot about this in my How to Start a Candle Biz for Beginners course. Um, and it's obviously way more in depth. It, it's eight modules deep of just great information that I've learned over these last few years. And this video is just a snippet of, of that. I also wanna thank Taylor Brands again for sponsoring this video. Y'all, take advantage of that platform. It is absolutely dope. You can do a lot and, and accomplish a lot just using that platform. I would definitely get your candle business off to the start you need in terms of putting your branding and your packaging and all of your assets together to launch your business. Check out my coupon code in the description box, Lady Simone YT for 40% off of Taylor Brands. Thank you again for your support and until next time, bye.